Welcome to the Pastor's Corner, a show that invites you to step into a sacred space where wisdom meets compassion, where faith intertwines with action, and where hearts are stirred and lives are transformed. Whether you find comfort in the pews of a church, the quiet corners of your home, or the bustling streets of your city, the Pastor's Corner is a place where you can find inspiration, encouragement, and a renewed sense of purpose. Welcome to the Pastor's Corner, where the transformative power of faith awaits you. Welcome to the first episode of The Pastor's Corner, where it's a sanctuary for the seekers, it's a place for the weary, and it's a place where you can find hope and inspiration. Today, I'm excited. On our first episode, we have the founder, the Bishop of Tabernacle Praise Ministries. Without Bishop Williams' leadership, the Pastor Corner wouldn't be here today, so I'm very excited. I'm very elated to, to be experienced the first episode with you at the Pastor's Corner with Bishop F.L. Williams. Bishop, West, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, I'm, you, you're my pastor now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me today, so why did it feel? I said, yeah, he's my pastor now, so I'm a church member now. <laughs> well, Bishop, remember, 21 years ago, May, May 2003, I remember because that's when we, I was about to get married, we was at TBN. You were hosting, and I was a guest. I remember I was that very well. Chief <laughs> Adler was also one of the guests. Right, yeah, right, right. Sure did. We was talking about, I think we were talking about, uh, when I was taking you you going through the seminary. About right, that. right. That you getting married. Yeah, I remember that well. 21 years ago. 21 you were hosting, and I was your guest. Now oh, now I'm hosting you, my guest. That's right. <laughs> take the <a> turn. <laughs> so, so, Mr., you recently um, decided to, to, to take a, another role in the ministry. So, how, how have things been going since you made that decision? Uh I don't feel no pressure anymore. <laughs> Seriously, I, I think my plans will never do more than 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 to get. I, I want to get out of sixty five. You know, I'm wow. I'm sixty nine now. And I'll be seventy this year. So it's not my plan to go. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, be so old that, that I, I, I lose relevance. Right. I mean that. Uh, uh, and I think it was time for for a new voice, a new leadership to carry us to the next dimension uh, in the Lord. Uh, for later that. Williams and I uh, both were, I think we're ready. You know, she's she's been here every step of the way the, the 35 years or so. We founded the church in 1988. Wow. And been ever since. And uh, so now it's, uh, we, we, we're church members now. Church members, church, church members. members. We're it, church members. It, it, it is, it's, it's a different feel. You my pastor and bishop, now you say we're a switch role. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, it, it is, it, it is, when I say, um, I said pressure, it, it's just that being able to, to uh, enjoy being 70, sure. you know, still study, still read, still praying, right. still yeah. preaching, sure. still teaching. Right. Um, but, but as, as, as directed by the church itself, uh, by the Holy Spirit and on the leadership God gave you. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. So Bishop, for 35 years, you've been here at the top, but prior to that, you had four years at another church in the midst of today and culture we live in churches start up, they quit. How were you able to sustain literally 40 years of ministry? Were there times you wanted to quit? And if you did, what kept you from quitting? Scared. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to quit. I've had, there There have been a couple of times I've come to the church with the intent of saying, this is it. Wow. This is God having truth. I said, I'm going to resign today. The pressure is not so much of continuing. It is, it is the pressure of family life, yet, your own family, all the cares of the people. Um, and then hear from God. Mm. Then your personal walk with God. And sometimes it's just, it, it gets almost overwhelming. And if I say it don't, they lie. Mm. I really believe that because it, it um, because we want to present the people to the Lord. Right, right. That's what I want. Right. What God wants them to have. So the four years I passed in Mississippi, you know, I was 20, what was that? Uh, almost 30, I think maybe 29, 30 years of age, my first pastorship. I passed that for four years uh, in Mississippi and, and passed the last two years. I was driving 147 miles one way every Wednesday night for Bible study and choir rehearsal because I can direct the choir too. That's a long drive. And every <laughs> Sunday morning, yeah, it was 294 miles every wow. every every Wednesday and every Sunday. Twice a week. Twice a week. Um, but that's what God, I thought, had me to do. And so when we found that this church, it's amazing when God told me to do it, I said, no. I said, please, God, don't make me do this because I didn't want to. I thought there's enough churches in the city. I didn't know anybody in the city. Right, right. I knew nobody in the city. And, 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 uh, uh, but he said, uh, do it. About two days after the Lord told me to start the ministry, I get a call from, um, my sister said, I felt the Lord told me to tell you to get a building. 
Confirmation. Confirmation. <laughs> and I said, okay, Lord, we did it. And we, we were seven members that we did it with. And uh, I'll start in, in, in this less in the rest of the history. And, and, and to, to, to speak to that legacy and that, that, that commitment to ministry, here we are 35 years later and hundreds of people are a part of the membership and thousands have been impacted by your your leadership and what God has called you to do. This day and age, you don't see that too often. They start churches and it, it's it's and quit and quit. quit, and quit. It, it, it sometimes gets, it's overwhelming in terms of I drive on campus. I've done it several times. I drive on campus, just stood in the middle of the parking lot. Wow. And it says only you. I said only you did this. Um, from where we came from, uh, the first church was my living room. We did that for about a month and a half right there in my living room at 4006 Merrifield Drive. Uh, then we moved to the first building on, on, on First Avenue, 728. First Avenue building wasn't no, no bigger than this room, not too much bigger than this room. And we stayed there for about 18 months. Then we moved over to 1817. I remember 1817. That's what I came <laughs> And then we came to this location here some, some years later. Uh, but, but sustaining power was just gone. I mean, no other, no method we could use, no gimmick you could use, no self-grandizement you could use. It's all God. And 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 if I can share with anything with anybody about doing what God called you to do, obedience. Obedience. Just obey what God say to do. That's going to cause some folk to get angry. It's going to cause some folk to walk away. But the obedience is what takes us to the finish line. Obedience, obedience. Your own self can get you in the race, mm. but obedience make you finish it. Wow, wow, wow. So, so, so obedience, we're, we're, we're in transition. Um, transition is important to God. Yes. We, we, Moses passed leadership over to Joshua. Exactly. Um, Elijah passed leadership over to Elisha. Um, Paul passed leadership over to Timothy. And even Jesus passed over leadership to the 12 disciples. Correct. Um, there's a lot of tension in leadership. W- how do we need to get navigate those waters in it where we transition in life, but particularly inside of churches? Because when we look at the generals in the faith, that's a lot of transition going on a lot of places throughout the church world. It is. And so the state of the church, we're at a, not an impasse, but we're in a season of transitioning where people can walk away or people don't know how to deal with it. What, what would be your advice to, to this generation? And that, that's a great point we need to discuss. Transition automatically causes change. And you've heard me say when I when I announced to the church that, you know, that I was retiring, you don't join a man right. or a woman. You join the ministry. Correct. The ministry is not one person. If that was the case, when we died, the ministry stopped. Right. What we have to keep in mind is that transition is for improvement and elevation, mm. not status quo. I think I've seen transition with a lot of people and I've and I even seen it nationally and, and, and things. What happened is, is we, uh, it, it becomes difficult when people don't want to change. Mm. Yes. Change is difficult at times. Um, when, when, when we understand what transition is, it's a shifting. Let me put it in automobile uh, analysis. When a car shifts to the next gear, the engine slows down. Hmm. It runs easier, but you go faster. Wow. Slows down, but go move faster. You you shift to go faster. You start off in a lower gear because that's when this stuff starts. That's that's hmm. the heavier. Now you're getting friction and motion going. But we didn't shift and make a transition with from, from, from me to you to slow us down. Right. It's to make it get easier. Hmm. You shouldn't have to go back and rebuild nothing. I so appreciate that. <laughs> I so appreciate that. You should not have to rebuild anything, mm-hmm. but we reinforce, we redirect. I guess you could call it re- re- reinvigorate because the engine is not supposed to get difficult with the transition. I don't go from first to third to make right. the engine go higher. Right, right, right. Slow it down. Slow it down. But the rigs, but the but the engine runs smoother because now you've gotten motion going. The church is already running. Right. So we don't we don't want to shift to a lower gear. Mm. So the shift from me to you is from 
forward trajectory, and that slows down. Well, basically, when I came out of seminary, I was 25 years of age, and people were- That's trying, when I got married at 25. <laughs> people were trying to get, you need to go and pastor, you need to go and pastor. But I felt at the moment, God wanted me to come back home. And telling you now, at a few months away from 45, um, I wasn't ready to pastor. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready now. Because <laughs> I've seen behind scenes the weight you carry and yeah. what you deal with. And being your assistant for years, I didn't have to carry what you carry. You took all that with you. I just filled in with what you shared with me. So um, we have a lot of young preachers out there who think they're ready to pastor. Preaching and pastor is two different things. It's totally separate. Right. That's two different animals. Right. Preaching is easy. You can do it in your sleep almost. It's the, it's, when you call it pastor, it's really shepherding. Yes. And what do shepherds do? Sheep do this. Sheep do that. Sheep stand. And he got to bring them all together. All together. The one who go over there by himself and keep going away. <laughs> he got to keep going and get them. That's what a shepherd does. And here's the thing that, 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 that I'll say to you and, and any young pastor who may see this. People are going to say, I wouldn't take that about you. I wouldn't do that about you. Why you let them do it? The shepherd's hearts are different. Mm. When I first started pastoring, I was tough as nails. <laughs> and God one day told me, mm. these are your people. These, these are your people? Wow. These, these are my folk. I said, I, you, you check me, Lord. Uh, <laughs> so it's a whole nother animal when, when, you, when you're pastoring. So as we transition from 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 thirty five years of them he and me, is it thirty five? Thirty five, yes, thirty five. Be thirty six this year. Thirty five years of he and me, and following my voice, they hear FL's voice. You know, now they hear Pastor Melton. That's a strange voice, right? Not from the beginning, not strange from they know you, right? But now you lead me, right? Then then, then assisting me, now you lead me. What I, what I say to, to, to the whole fellowship, to all the church itself, is that you're not following the man. Right. You're following the leadership of the man as he leads the church. Mm -hmm. And that's a big difference. That's a huge difference. And, and get advice for, and, a young, for a young pastor. Yes. <laughs> for I a, didn't get that, by the way, when I started. Right. And that's why I feel privileged and, and blessed to, to have come up on the, this for 20 years and still saying there's room to grow, always that's growing, that's really, learning that's people. Really. And I think it's a relationship between shepherd and sheep that the shepherd learns more of the sheep and the sheep uh, helps the shepherd to be the shepherd. Absolutely. And and, and, and that's what I'm learning already. And you'll find, you'll, you'll find it. Same church, like like in our same house, same church, same teaching, same singing, same preaching. Right. Different sheeps who perceive it differently. Yes. And your job is to stay the same. When they don't want you to change. Hmm. They don't want you to be toward them, and you can't. Terry should see me. He does, but he can't see you any different than he sees the other ones. Exactly. Exactly. And so it, it's just like it's just like however you do in transitioning from, from, from me to you. That's why when we went to so I said, well, can, can Bishop do this? No, Bishop can't do that. Right, right. I remember. That's pastor's responsibility. Right. Because why? Because I'm no longer the voice. Mm. I'm no longer the voice of the church. Gotcha. And so we, 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 we as a young pastor, when I started, uh, no one set me down. Now I was, I, I served up under pastor for, year, for years when I was in college. Right. But when I started off on my own, nobody was there every day with me. And I'm pastoring folks, and I'm from the outside. Right, right. I mean, I'm from Alabama. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> right, right. And you know me, man. You know, so I have, I have to do that. But, but the, the, the main thing is, is, is keeping in mind why we do this. Mm. When I told you the times I want to quit, in a moment, Lord, give me some sympathy. He gave me no sympathy. <laughs> Elijah moments. Yes. <laughs> in that cave, high now. Right. Just defeated all Bill's prophet. And I'm high. high. Wow. Because sometimes it gets. And anybody say they don't get tired, they lie. Anybody say they don't get difficult, they, they lie. All those things happen. But it's because it's not us right. who does it. You know, it's not us who, 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 who caused it to happen. And, and, and to go from, from founding the church, you know, 
to 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 to, to now without responsibilities. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get happy, but <laughs> but it feels right, right. A weight lifted. It's a weight lifted. It's a weight lifted. Uh, I think Brother uh, Thomas told me about two weeks ago. Like I lost 10, ten years of my life, I stepped through. Uh, <laughs> when people were acting, I said, "Bishop looks so youthful." <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I get you. No, uh, matter of fact, my, my sister, no, uh, Bianca asked me the other day, "says How does it feel you got to prepare for sermon?" I said, "No, I stay prepared. Uh, I just know who I'm preaching. You know, I right. stay prepared. It, it's a different, right. but it also it also does me well to see the people come." It does. When I, when I drove on the campus yesterday, I mean, not yesterday on Sunday. And I drove up from coming from Uniontown because I went to Uniontown to preach. And I drove up and saw all the people in uh, cars parked on the streets, not just a parking lot. Me and my heart just, mm. I said, yeah, God, that's you. <laughs> that's you. And to see it and, and, and to hear you, the people who came out for Bible study. Yes. See, let me tell you what they told us about, about the we in school. They said, one, they come to church for God on mm-hmm. Sunday. Sunday evening, uh, they come to church for the pastor. On Wednesday, come for themselves. So, <laughs> I remember that. So, but you had a good crowd on Wednesday, and, and that, that that is so encouraging. Transition is change itself. Yes. The whole term is transition. Trans- right. I know it said transition, but really right. it's transitioning. Because it never stops. Never stops. That's good. It never it's stops. continuation of, of, of that. And and I tell everyone, Pastor Dario is not FL. Mm-hmm. Though he preached like me, but he ain't me too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so so what 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 we do is we undergird. When Moses told Joshua, you know, when he, when, when you know, the Lord told Moses, you know, you ain't going in. Right, right. Joshua gonna do it. But then he told Joshua, as I was with my servant, yes, Moses. So I'll be with you. Just don't be fearful. Just don't be fearful. Be, be strong. Be obedient. I'm, I, I, no man prevail overcome you mm. all your days. As I would most social abuse you. With you. Mm. That's what the people have to also understand in the transition period. That's a shifting of the guards. Mm-hmm. It's the changing of things. Uh, and, and, and everything that's done. And I think we have to get this, keep this in our mindset, Pastor. We never transition to keep the old as it is. Mm. That is, that's, that's heavy. If you do, it will no need for transition. Exactly. If Tabernacle Praise was going to stay away, if I had to go, I should never retire. Mm. I didn't retire for the church to remain in neutral or remain in third gear. You got two more gears before you get fifth gear. <laughs> right, right, right. You got to shift to those two gears. Then you would come. And then just punch the button and go to overdrive. And you, you cruise down the road. And Bishop, I think that's the challenge. People won't change, but what you just said, if if change, if we're gonna change, we can't stay the same. Right. Anytime there's a change, you got to change with the change. Right. And so the times are changing, but we as the people must change with right. the changing of itself. You know, we 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 have a um we have great opportunity here. We have some awesome people in this church. We do, we do. You know, I go all, I've been some all, almost most of all the major churches I've gone, all the churches around here, and I wouldn't trade in them for this church. I'm being honest. It's home. It's just home. Man. I love <laughs> the people. Home. They, they, you know, that got some anointed people in it, gifted people, very gifted, talented people. Uh, when you when you transition, and I'm and I'm certain when Moses gave his thing over to Joshua, you know, I'm getting his thing over to Joshua. For. <laughs> right, right. I've been following Moses. Right. God knew this before it happened. Exactly. Who would be the shift in the train and change? Again, I want to, I want to stop and say at sixty five. That fact, Lady William told me you said sixty five. <laughs> well, the Lord didn't tell me that's, that's what I was saying. But that's the height of the pandemic too, Bishop. So transition it sure was, was very difficult. Oh wow, it sure was. It was very, very difficult. Sure was. It sure was. <laughs> You're right. I mean, God, I'm telling you, God is timing. Not, 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 God, God used it. Yes. He didn't cause it. I don't know if he didn't cause it, but he right. used it. Right, right, You're sure right. I right, know right. And, and, and speaking of that, Bishop, sure. since the height of the pandemic, church has, how does the church remain relevant to the digital world, but at the same time, we know God has called us to come together and assemble ourselves, how the church can be a hybrid 
version of church. I mean, that, that that that's a great uh, uh, point for discussion. One of the things that we in our conference we go to, they're talking about um, using all the social media platforms to you know some some people have pastors uh, online pastors. Right. It's all they do is pastor the folks online. You and I've talked about that. Yes, We've yes. talked about things we need to do, and I think that's, that that should be something we need to move forward with as well. The problem is we can't lose sight of the physical building. Mm. Why? Because when we are, when we are all online, the there's no co- connection physically. You think God didn't know there's going to be a digital age? <laughs> right. Say for say not some of yourselves. <laughs> right. Right. You knew that. Right. 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 Because. That time I need you. I need people to, to lay hands on me, pray for me. Exactly. So I think what we do is we, 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 we keep the online as real or as personal, personable. I mean, it's 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 not just we they showing that they seen the, the, the live service that day or whatever it is. Exactly. But and and we have to connect with them beyond Sunday. Beyond, beyond that Bible study, where we connect with them on, on, on a regular basis, like we do in church, it's, 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 it's a challenge. A huge challenge. It's a challenge. You, you know, when we, when we went through the pandemic. You know, we we in that off. We we had preaching seven folks in here, <laughs> right? Just like right. we started with seven people, right? Uh, with the media team, with just, <laughs> just the media team, <laughs> right? And, and, and a camera, right? And you preaching like uh, like a madman, right? You know, right? Uh, to to to, uh, but what what that did to me, Pastor? And, and and you and you did it the online stuff the online stuff we do now. When you're online, it's you and God. You and God. You can't you 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 can't fake that. That camera looking at you. <laughs> right, right. By yourself. Exactly. You can't fake that. You it, it, it made us become better. I think preachers and teachers, I really believe that. Yes. It made us have to go back and 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 and, and, and hey, and then people more people watch you. See, everybody became everybody became mega churches. Overnight. Overnight. Cause everybody see you worldwide, wherever here, yeah, everybody, everybody got, got folks overseas now. You're member, <laughs> but they're not members. They're online members. Right, right, uh, right. And so, so the relevance, the relevancy of, of, of online church uh, of, in the digital age is to not to move him out. Mm. And that's easy to be done. We can make him not even. We 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 become we become performers. Yes. On that stage, because we, we 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 people are seeing us. Exactly. And we and we, and we can we can we can perform him out of the picture. I, wow, that's dangerous. Oh, it's oh, very God. dangerous. And 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 then we 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 we. we it, it's like if I could just saw segue into uh, what's happened to the church world as, as, as a whole. Yes, right? please do. And I thought on the way here. That's okay, Lord. How do I tie this in? We become so carnal. Yes, carnality is killing us. People can do what they think they want to do and then try to serve God out of the same body. Mm. And what do you tell us in Romans? Romans 8. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. Yes. And as you know, that word is hostile. Hostile. Right. That word means hostile. In other words, when I get carnal, I'm hostile toward God. Find God. I'm fighting him. I mean, I'm <laughs> resisting him. But we're the church and we find we're God. We're the church. And, and, and so what I've done, we got we got carnality in the pulpit, mm. carnality in, in, in the music department, carnality in the choir, carnality in the praise team, carnality in the pews. Wow. Carnality simply means that I'm, I'm worldly. And when I'm worldly, I'm outside of the arc of the kingdom. Mm. I'm, I'm, being, I'm not being kingdom right. divided or driven. I'm, 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 I'm now flesh driven. So what did that make me? That made me carnal. That made me hostile toward God. So now that anything goes, you you know the stuff they put on TV now and, and says, uh, I'm tr- I'm attracting the young people. Where did the gospel have to be watered down to attract anybody? Exactly. I didn't get saved because of the watered down gospel. Exactly. Our children, our children didn't get saved because we watered down the gospel. We told them what the gospel is. Now, we know method change. Method got to change. Right. Yes. But the message can't. Never changes. We can't change the gospel the way that he gave. We can't change be whole five miles of holy, no matter exactly. conversation. We can't change that. But now, Pastor, the church, and not old church, we do it now. It's quote unquote <clears throat> to go with the uh, 
I guess the relevancy of now, almost anything goes almost. Everything goes. And then if you criticize it, you, you're being insensitive. I'd rather be criticized and be right than be accepted <laughs> and be wrong. Because That's good. Tell you, and, 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 and as a pastor, we get accused. Okay, now, the carnal crowds will tell you, you're being too, you're too, you're too tight, you're too strict. Exactly. Let these young folk be the young folk. Of course, let them be the young people. Exactly. But that is a standard. You heard me talk this, especially on Monday night things, is, is that if 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 the base be messed up, the building can't stand. You can rebuild on a foundation. Right. But there ain't no foundation. What you gonna rebuild on? It's nothing to build on. And there's nothing to build back on. And it took it, you gotta keep the process going. And and the culture is the, the world's culture has gotten to the church so badly. That music, you can't tell, you gotta sit down and listen to it. What is that a gospel song? Same same songs in the club in the church. Same, is that a gospel? Can I dance it or should I be should I ask for can I have his hand for dance? <laughs> right, sir. It, it, it's what is what? I, I encourage you to keep the church the church. It ain't a club. Amen. It, it ain't a place where we come and meet folk. Right. Amen. Definitely not. You don't get no phone numbers. Right, right. You can get your digit. What digit? You can get no digit. Anymore. John three sixteen. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so right. when we when we do this uh Evangelist Cross, you know my sister, my uh, Prophet yeah, Cross. Prophet Cross. Right. She told me when we started this mission, she said, Listen. She said, just preach. Mm. Don't preach clothes. Don't preach makeup. Don't that's preach true. jewelry. Don't preach this or that. Preach the word. And that's what I've tried to do from day one. Is mm. preach the word. Nothing. I'm sorry, go ahead. And the words will keep us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm sorry. But Paul says to Timothy in the last days, they're going to heap up teachers for themselves because of the itching ears. ears. And yeah. what you hear, I heard you saying is that those are days that they're heaping up teachers and people are preaching according to what the culture wants Bingo. instead of what Christ wants. That's exactly what they're doing. And so I, I, we, we have challenged as believers to be able to, to, to Jews say we got to contend for the faith. Contend for the contend faith. For the faith. That's what he said. And so those of us who are going to hold the bloodstained banner of Christ, we must make sure that we guard the gospel that we preach to contend for the faith instead of being lured over into a culture that says to be popular. I never seen a day they would preach and want to be popular That's your and not be right. Not That's what we are. You know, you ought to be the least known, not the most known. That's good. What did John tell us? Mm -hmm. I must decrease. That he may increase. He may increase in me. He may increase. I make you a promise, Pastor. <clears throat> you hold up the bloodstained banner, you ain't to worry about the support. Mm. It's going to be there. Wow. God got to do it. He just told us if I lift, if I'm lifted, Christ said I'm lifted. Same thought he had until he lifted. Him. <laughs> Should have never lifted on that on, on, on that on that wooden cross. Should have never lifted him. Right, right. If I'm lifted from the earth, I not you, mm -hmm. I, I was wrong. wrong. See, my prayer every day when I pray, you know, I'm praying for the church. I still get up and pray. I still get up. I ain't get up this morning six though, but I'm here. I'm here <laughs> still praying for the church. Is that send those from the east, the west, the north, and the south? Watch this now, that you have ordained mm. to be a part of ministry. That's you have prayer. ordained. That's what that's my prayer for the churches. For the church. Because you're gonna reach who I couldn't. Mm -hmm. That's a whole new wave coming mm. that don't know God. Wow. And they and and they will be able to be molded. In the direction the church wants them to go. That's a prophecy. Mm. A new wave is coming. I hear that. That has to be shaped and molded. When you came to the church, we were establishing who we were. Mm. And people didn't know anything about what we're doing now. I mean, people <laughs> didn't know what we were doing. Right, right. It's coming now. It's coming now. <laughs> Because you, st you set that standard. The st <laughs> you just nailed it, man. And so now, uh, when we, the crowd we're drawing now, mm -hmm. one's going to be more early. Mm -hmm. They're going to be more carnal. Yes. They're going to be eager to learn, but unlearning the things of God. Mm -hmm. So wow. the challenge is to get the elders and the deacons and the ministers and the people to embrace difference and change. 
but not compromise. I'm putting together. You preached yesterday, uh, uh, Sunday. And while you was preaching, I got a word. What's wrong with compromise? Mm. <laughs> because folks are saying, what's wrong with that? Right. What's wrong with compromise? Why can't they do that? Right, right. And that's the easiest thing to do. I told somebody, uh, uh, I can't remember what it was, was talking about when God, you know, Satan don't have to. Do anything to make you say you have to do anything but to give us another thought. That's it. That's all he needs. <laughs> For some not here. That's all he does. He plants the seed. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. God know the day you eat that fruit. You have, you be as God. You have to be open. Sure. And be as God and left. Mm -hmm. Then Eve saw that the tree was good for food. The tree decided to make one wise and good for food as she ate. From a thought. Mm -hmm. So when they come into us, we can't compromise. But they come in. They come from the east, they come from the west, they come from the north, they come from the south to the ministry. And they're and they're coming to be changed. They just don't know how to do it. Because right. you you don't show up to the church unless you won't change. You won't God. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have for those of us who are holding up the bloodstained banner. Um, we don't compromise, but our hearts have to be in such a way that we can give them the grace to change. And not forget where they came from. Exactly. We weren't born safe. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. When, when you've been in church for, 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 for a certain amount of time, you, you forget where you come from. Oh, that's, that's, that, that's one that's of the principles mm -hmm. I think that the enemy uses. Mm -hmm. He takes, and, and we can drive folks away. Exactly. With our rigidness, without being able to understand and remember that somebody got you saved. Yes. yes. To the point where you had to change. And you got to get people to change to change. And every time I see them in the club, but they're in church today. Right. right. They're church and we today. thank God they're here. <laughs> How you know they're in the club? Were you there or something? <laughs> right, right, right. 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 Along those lines, it, it, it's seeing and understanding that God's going to send you. Not who you need. Mm. Who needs you? you? Wow. Who needs you? Wow. And what I'm learning, Bishop, the more you learn of God, the more God starts pulling stuff from you. You don't desire to do certain things. So the crowd that we attract, the more they learn of him and get a relationship with him. They don't want to go back to the club that's good. because they still pursuing him. They want more of him. Right. And I think that's why it's so pivotal that we give people word, give, give them God, not ourselves. When, 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 when we, when we, when, when, when I told Again, we, again, my plan would not do this no longer in 65. <laughs> and I didn't think about the pandemic. It's been three years, mm -hmm. pandemic. Yes. The church was, and, and, and by the way, and what, what would I be to the point where I could barely walk and talk and still try to pastor? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> and then secondly, right. more importantly, you're not helping the people. I hear that. You know, when, 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 when Jethro told Moses what Moses was doing all that, he said, Me, you ain't step out. But the people need a word, need a word. He said, no, you, you handle the big map. You know, over 50s and 10s and whatever, let them handle that stuff. Exactly. Transition from one pastor to the next. And, you know, and I know some, you know, struggling right now with it. It's because somebody don't want to let go. Yes. I ain't had no problem letting go. <laughs> <laughs> and not because I, not cause I, I, I wanted to, right. but because the need to. Gotcha. I, I, God has given me my health. I'm, I'm reasonably healthy. Thank the Lord. Uh, my mind is still clear. Thank the Lord. Yes. You know, uh, uh, Lady Williams is still uh, in good health. Yes. We both got some, some thing we did with health, but, uh, you know, still uh, reasonable, uh, folks, reasonable force of health and strength. <laughs> So we can still serve God, still fulfill a mission. I'm still going to preach and teach. Right, right. But uh, let me preach one every so so I'm just going to preach. Poor preacher at any time, bitch. But the thing, the thing is, it is, is, is that the sh transition causes upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Not remains the same. Right. Well, I shift from first to third gear. Nothing happened. Cost it. Ah! What can I shift for? <laughs> the shift makes it get easier. So no, tell me to praise not gonna get difficult, it's gonna get easier. Get easier. 
As amen. Amen. The amen. the shift in the transition. Amen. Well, Bishop, it's 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 an exciting time. Um it the, is. The, the, the beauty I have, and it might be selfish, um, in the midst of the transition, I still have my leader here who I can confide in. When mm-hmm. difficult things come up, everybody don't have that. So I, I count that as a blessing and, 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 and favor. That's true. <laughs> that I got an issue here I don't know how to deal with. I need to run it by you. And from your life experience and things that you've encountered to help guide through that process. And I think it's a double whammy. I think people miss sometimes. You have somebody who is pastoring the pastor. You still overseer. And you have churches up under you yeah. um, in different locations. And so um, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm very no, grateful. I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. And I'm, no, I'm happy. I'm proud. I'm happy and proud. Oh, I ain't going nowhere. Right. <laughs> well, I won't be here. They will see my ugly face every time they do it. Um, and, and, and I do it gladly and humbly. I'm humbled. I'm see, I'm, this is, this is a humbling experience to, to see God. And you know, I preached several weeks ago. It's just as my one of the founding members. Yes. On legacy. I have no legacy until I leave here. Mm. So it's still being built. Right. It's still being built. And and so to, to, to see God do what he is doing in the ministry now and see, and see it from, from outside mm. and not from the pulpit. I'm seeing it from the pews. It's rewarding. Wow. And I just pray that people understand and can see God all over this. Because I'm telling you, he's going to send it from the east, the west, north, and the south. They're coming Unlearn in the things of God, unknowledgeable in the things of God, but want and need God. And we have to be ready. Got to be ready. Got to be ready. Got to be ready. Now, you say you're not doing any preaching, that much preaching, but you're still prepared. I know there's two broadcasts that you do every week still. Yes. Um, and, I, and I encourage people, they got to check out how we got here. They you, they get to see the, I guess, the unfiltered version. Yes. This week. Yeah. <laughs> um, every, Monday, every, every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Right. on Central Standard Time. Right. I do how we got here. Right. And right. that came to me from God in, in that we talked about how we got to, to, to the way, the house, the church, family, right. everyone else. And I'm not preaching. I'm, I'm going to use the book, <laughs> right. the Bible. I can't help it. And I can talk about those things too. Right. Right. They, they can see me not, not have to worry about what did Jesus say? What did Paul say? I'm going to say whatever he'll say. <laughs> well, I encourage everybody to take And then 30 minutes with Bishop was Wednesday and Friday that you right. started that during the pandemic. I don't think people realize how much teaching and preaching you've been doing since the pandemic with doing online things and doing things inside the services. I mean, I, we said, think about it, I, I, how much I talked. I was talking for before we retired. You know, I was doing Monday night, how we got here. Wednesday, third minute of the bishop. Right. Wednesday night, Bible study. Mm-hmm. Back on Friday, doing third minute of the bishop. Yes. And then Sunday morning. With three times Sunday morning. Three times Sunday morning. That's right. Uh, eight o'clock <laughs> service, driving to Uniontown, <laughs> preaching 945, coming back at the 11 o'clock service. In one week. In one week. So I was doing, and, and you know, they tell the pastor that right. a 30 minute sermon is the same equivalent, equivalent to eight hour shift. Yes. So I was working three shifts on Sunday. <laughs> three shifts on Sunday. I ain't got to do now one shift now, boy, you don't have <laughs> <laughs> But I definitely encourage um, the viewers to, to tune in to how we got here. Definitely. And your how we got here is on podcasts as well. Um, Apple Music. Uh, Spotify and Amazon. Yeah, tell me that again because I can't remember all of them. What, what? You on Apple? Listen to that now. Apple. Apple, Apple, podcast, Apple podcast. Spotify. Spotify. And Amazon. And Amazon. So, you got to listen now. Right. <laughs> 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 Definitely check you out. Follow you there. Um, but it's been great sitting here talking to you on the first episode Maybe. of the Pastor. I'm, I'm honored. I'm tell you, I, I'm honored. I'm so honored, so excited. I know we're gonna have viewers all everywhere watching this show because it was a great show. I think, and um, and I believe, and I know it's a great show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you've been turned into the Pastor's Corner. We've been talking with Bishop F.L. Williams Sr., the founder of T.O.P. Ministries, the bishop of this house. And we're so grateful for his leadership and all that he's done. The Pastor's Corner is a place where the secrets can find sanctuary and the weary can find hope and inspiration. We'll see you next time at the Pastor's Corner. <laughs>